All right, so welcome back to part three of the skills, skills certification presentation. Um, we are now to precision exams, okay? So precision exams. This is the site that the state has hired to proctor the tests, essentially. Um, bookmark this site, okay? I know I've said that about a couple of sites so far. This is another one you're going to need to bookmark. If you are teaching a skills certification course, a 9th through 12th, class that has a skills certification, you're going to be going here, period. Um, if you, especially with the foods class, you'll need to, to be able to put your industry certification into precision exams as well with the food handler permit, if you're doing that as well. So the videos that they have on here, that they walk you through the process your first time, are really pretty dang good. Um, it's going to be better than, than me walking you through the process. Essentially, you're going to come to this site you're going to do the teacher, the proctor login. This is where you're going to bring students when they're ready to take the test as well, uh, but they'll do student login. Um, they've got all kinds of learn how to get started buttons and um, training videos and administration login. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of information on this site to help walk you through the process. So when you get here and you log in, I would highly recommend that in your cell phone, um, make a contact called Cactus and get your Cactus number in your cell phone. Then put your password, your username and password for precision exams in a note on that, that resource. I personally also put my school email password and like to my computer login on that as well because it is a long time from May to August <laughs> When you get back to school in August, sometimes it's hard to remember some of those passwords. So if you program them in your phone under Cactus, then you always have it. So that's just something that I do. It helps me. Um, once you get logged in, this is essentially what it looks like. Okay, so you create your, your class list. You create the tests um, simply by clicking my class list and you create a new class. You just type in first period foods, and then you link a test with that. Um, so I would want to link the foods test, I think it's like test number 340 or something like that, with it. So it's, it's a pretty simple process. Again, the videos will walk you through this process. Once your students, once you're ready to proctor the test, you go to My Tests, then you open up that class and you proctor the test. It really isn't rocket science. What we want to look at right now is the results. Um, how you can use the results to help your, your next semester students do even better. Um, my mom always told me, um, my mom was a facts teacher as well, she was kind of my mentor for a long time, still is, <laughs> um, you learn a lot your first year teaching, you learn a lot your second year teaching, your students actually learn something your third year teaching. <laughs> so. Kind of be patient with yourself. It's a learning process. Every year I learn something new that I go back and I change for the next time I teach it. So looking at these report lists, this teacher standard report is a very valuable feedback tool for you. So if you click on view and then it brings up, you just adjust the class period that you're wanting to look at and it will bring up the results for that class period. Um, so I can see, and again, this is a, an example that I got from the USBE so that I can do this presentation. Um, so it's not my students, but here's here's what we're looking at. It gives all of the information. Um, it says how many questions there were, how many points, how many standards, how many kids took it, and how many kids passed it. Um, so this right here is the same information that's on that chart that tells you how many questions are going to be asked for each of the strands. Then it gives you your list of students and how they did on each strand. At the very bottom, there's, uh, and I, right, I don't know if you guys see that bar right there or not, but it's in the way. <laughs> it gives you a summary down here at the bottom. It shows you how your students did as an average and then how the state did as an average. So you can not only compare um, your individual students with how they did per strand, but how your students did comprehensively in comparison to other teachers in the state. Um, this is good feedback because if those numbers aren't above 80 percent 
for your student scores, then your students are not going to be passing. So this tells you, okay, my students, if I'm looking at this, they really bombed strand six because it was only at 59%. Um, so maybe what I want to do is network with other teachers and find a teacher that I can collaborate with that did a good job on strand six. Find out how they taught it. Um, what activities did they do? What, what study reinforcements did they provide? How did they present the information to their students that helped their students be successful? And what can you do to tweak what you do the next time you teach it? This is a very valuable feedback tool right here. I need to put a plug in for collaboration here. Find a teacher that is similar to your teaching style that you can collaborate with, whether they are in your school or whether they are at another school, even another district. Find somebody who has a similar teaching style to you that teaches the same classes as you that you can collaborate with. Get a strong professional learning community. That's one of the best things that you can do. And I'm telling you right now, the people on this, this new teacher resource training that you're doing, we are all here for you. If you need something from us, if you ask and let us know that you're struggling with something, we can either help you or we can put you in contact with somebody who can help you. So please make sure that you're reaching out because that professional learning community is so important. Um, coming back to this, these are the resources that are going to help you be successful. I've shown you this slide before. Bookmark this <laughs> site. If you haven't bookmarked it yet, do it now. I've said this like a billion times already today. You need to bookmark this. You need to know where to find the filing cabinet. Bookmark this page because this is going to be incredibly valuable for you. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Somebody's already done it. So find the resources, tweak it. You can't just open this up and assume that it's going to work for your students. Your students are not the same as my students. Um, my teaching style is not the same as your teaching style. So you've got to find something that's going to work for you and your students that you are teaching. It's not a ready-made thing, but it gives you the idea of what you, sh you can do. So use these resources. Bookmark these pages, <laughs> seriously. Um, need to take a minute here and talk about standards-based grading. There are a lot of schools in this state that you that your principal or your administration will require you to utilize a standard-based grading concept. Now, there's a huge gray area in what standard-based grading is. If we're looking at the actual definition, essentially, this is a grading system that the grade, the academic reporting, okay, the grade is based on the student's ability to to demonstrate mastery of the standards that they are being taught. Um, I really like certain concepts of standard-based grading. Um, the true standard-based grading uses a, a four-point grade scale, a one, two, three, four, um, where most of the students, the goal is to be at a three. Um, there are some schools where you can't give a student a four unless they have like totally excelled and advanced and proven like several times through several assignments that they have earned the four. Um, it do, you, need, you need to find out what kind of system your school is going to be using. Uh, my school doesn't use a standards-based grading. I personally do. Um, I don't do the one, two, three, four. The whole point of a standards-based grading is it's meant to to provide a meaning to the grade. It helps keep the students and the teachers accountable, um, meaning that you're actually teaching what you're supposed to be teaching and you're not just doing um, this fun unit because it's fun and you're wasting class time that you could be teaching students what they need to be knowing. Um, it's helped to, it's meant to, to help differentiate learning activities because you're gonna have students that are advanced and you're gonna have students that are struggle a little bit and need some intervention. So this standards-based grading concept really helps, helps with that. Um, the idea is to help students become more intrinsically self-motivated in their learning. Um, it helps you track their standards as they're, as they're passing things off. Um, again, there are some stand, as, aspects to standards-based grading that I really love, and there are aspects that I don't love. Um, 
what you need to do is you need to find out what your if your administration is going to require something like this or not. So if you have questions, again, reach out to somebody who you think might be able to help you with that. Um, this presentation, we are, we are at a close here. I said this at the beginning, if you have a question, ask. Anything that's been presented on, more than likely somebody else has the same question. So please ask, reach out when we get together again later this afternoon. Um, I'm supposed to give you a writing prompt. So after viewing this presentation, these three parts, um, I want you to share your thoughts on the skills certification process. Um, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? What, what questions do you still have? Um, how can you encourage your students to take pride in their education? Okay, these are things that you might want to think about as you're considering your thoughts here. Um, so they actually try on the test. I know that in my district, the number of students that I have pass the skills certification at 80% or higher, um, I get additional funding the next year. My district gives funding for the to, back to the school, so it, it allows me to do more with my students and to buy additional equipment because I get some of that back. So the better I do, the better I teach, the, the more funding I get for my students. So for, the, for me, and this is a topic that you're probably going to want to talk with your administration about because uh, according to state policy, you are not supposed to use end-of-level tests on the student's grade. Now, I personally have issues with that, as does my principal, so he has given me permission to use this on their grade. So there is accountability there. There are some administrations that are not going to want you to count it on their grade, so you need to figure out how you're going to make it important to that student. You need to be able to talk up this skills certification so that they're excited about getting this certificate. What can you do? Okay. Um, another kind of concept to think about, especially in these unprecedented times that we're teaching in, um, how can you help your students be successful? What are you going to be doing as a teacher as these, these tests approach to help your students be successful, especially regarding the skills certifications? which is another question that I'm hoping Lola will address when it comes time to, to skills certify. If we are not in school as we were this spring, you know, what's, what's going to happen? What's, how's this going to look? And then any other questions that you might still have in this, this skills certification process, who you might turn to for help or anything like that. Guys, I'm hoping that, that I answered at least some of the questions, some of the concerns, um, some of the stress that you may have about the skills certification process. If you have any questions, please, please, please ask. Um, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Thanks.